Hey guys, welcome back to SoCal Sports Report with Elise Garcia. I'm Bobby DeMiro. Excited to bring you another week of great sports debate here in Southern California. Sunny Southern California. Sunny and breezy. Perfect day today. A little bit of a breeze, a little bit of sun. Mix of hot, mix of cold, whatever. Um, let's get started. Topic number one today. We're going to talk about a little bit of football because we've been doing a lot of baseball lately. But it's Oakland Raiders time. Uh, we teased this a couple weeks ago. I know we have a lot of people. Who wants to talk about the Raiders? Listen, we have a lot of people on Twitter who asked us to talk about the Raiders and are sure. excited about talking about the Raiders. So they want to hear it. Um, we're talking Terrell Pryor. Actually, I guess we should say ex-Oakland Raiders because he's not a Raider anymore. Traded from the Raiders just last week to the Seattle Seahawks for a seventh round draft pick. First question before we get into the Seahawks thing. This is what I don't understand, Elise. Raiders GM Reggie McKenzie said at the NFL owners meetings on the record that they were either going to trade or release Terrell Pryor. Why would you say That's that? That's like Mark Zuckerberg coming out and saying something like some insider secret about Facebook and saying, hey guys, this is what we're going to do next <laughs> week, uh, you know. This is, that, that's like Zuckerberg coming out and saying, hey, we're going to try to buy Snapchat for $500 million, but if they ask for a billion, we'll give them a billion. It's like, wait a minute, you lose all your leverage when you say you're going to trade him, and if you can't trade him, you release him, because if you release him, teams just wait to pick him up. It makes absolutely no sense, and I always think of it from a business perspective. It, I don't really, I don't understand what was going through his head to say that. And he's not the only one. In Reggie McKenzie's defense, it's not just the Raiders who say this. I've seen teams do this before, and I don't understand why you would announce you were going to trade or release somebody because you completely use, lose your leverage. Now, with the Raiders, they ended up trading him. They got a seventh-round draft pick, which is probably nothing. Um, before we get to, to uh, Pryor in Seattle, the Raiders have a couple things going on. They've got Matt Schaub, is, who looks to be their quarterback now, and then they've got this draft pick. They're drafting very high this year, and there's a lot of quarterbacks available. Please, Elise, tell them how I feel about Teddy Bridgewater. He's not a fan. He's not a fan. What's the thing about getting rid of the water under the bridge? It's all water under a bridge? Yeah. He's not water under a bridge. He sucks. <laughs> this guy is not a fan, and I'm sure if you're not a fan either, talk to Bobby because you guys can go on and on. Bobby thinks he's going to be a bust. He thinks he's going to just. You ever heard be a of Jamarcus dive. Russell? It's Jamarcus Russell Part Two. Draft Bortles, draft Manziel, draft Derek Carr, draft whoever else if you want to get a quarterback. Um, here's the thing about Bridgewater. He played at Louisville. Louisville had a very, very, very good defense in a very, very, very bad American Athletic Conference, and the defense carried the team. Bridgewater could not figure out how to play against AAC defenses. You think he's going to play in the NFL? Yeah, well, it makes him a good draft pick. Obviously, but it's, you know, I, I agree where, you know, if you're playing in a poor division or in a poor, um, you know, poor league and you still win, it makes you look good. It makes your brand look good until you have to play again. It's yeah. a real deal. Until you have to get to the NFL and you stink and you only last for like three years. Speaking of stinking and lasting for three years, that may be prior and what ends up happening to him in Seattle. He's played a couple years in Oakland, rushed for a franchise record almost 600 yards last year, but his QB rating was 30. Yeah. 30. Which is crazy that he would be drafted to the Seahawks. Well, I, I mean, what is Pete Carroll seeing? It's the same what? thing about like Mark Sanchez when the when Mark Sanchez gets a new team or whoever else. Michael, I mean, Michael Vick's a better example. But yeah. when these guys get new teams, take a flyer on somebody. Pryor's a great athlete, so maybe you use him like a wildcat wide receiver, Antoine Randall L type of person. But I agree with you. You, you, he's not a quarterback. He's not going to be a quarterback, and obviously the Seahawks have a quarterback. So, My, do you think he's better than Sanchez? <sighs> Why wouldn't Carroll, knowing Sanchez, take Sanchez? Well, I mean, the GM made the trade, not Carroll. Sure. So maybe Carroll didn't have a but say in it. But he has a huge say in almost he, he everything does, yeah. in Seattle. And, and, well, here's the other thing. Maybe Sanchez is going to, I don't know Sanchez's contract, but maybe he's more expensive than Pryor is. Sure. Although, both Pryor and Tavares Jackson, the other backup, they both make more than Russell Wilson. Yeah, Wilson is is not having. I mean, he's having. A, he had a great season, obviously, but uh, he also just had a you know announced he was going through a divorce with his wife. So, do you think Pryor can take his wife? <laughs> Hey, maybe. Yeah, I don't think that's even on the table. But no, I mean, Wilson is going to lose a lot of money in the divorce, maybe. I don't know. But Wilson makes less than these two guys. But they haven't been married for 10 years. That's which true. Which is like the Kobe, Vanessa, you know, when they were thinking about getting Yeah, well, divorced, that, was, that, that whole was thing was huge. Bad. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. now, you know, two years, I don't really think you can get, you can still get a lot, but not as much as if you were married for the, you know, you have to be married 10 years to get half. Is that the law? I think so. Really? Yeah. In like the country or is it state to state? Uh... 
I can't remember. I, I remember studying it in my business law class a couple years ago. But wow. Yeah. So and you know, in certain cases, uh, this is totally off topic, but if you, uh, you know, if you, you know, call off an engagement or a divorce, in certain cases, you actually have to give the ring back. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, but you know, sometimes you don't. But in like, oh, you mean like legally, you, you must return give, the ring? Yes, depending on who breaks up with who. Wow. Yeah. If you know the, if you're a lawyer or an attorney or you know, you know law. This is the farthest off topic we've ever gotten the show, and I'm not even mad. I'm just impressed. Yeah, there's there's a certain like if you if you and I were if you and I were getting <laughs> so off topic. If you and I were getting married and you broke up with me, I think. I can still keep the ring, but if I broke up with you, I'd have to give you the ring back. That makes sense. Yeah. Like legally though, because it's yeah, like an legally, asset, it's valuable. Legally, exactly. Okay, but what and it's if, like a, it's considered a gift, which is still considered... Okay, Yeah. second question. If you and I are getting married, I give you an engagement ring, you break up with me, so right. you would have to return the ring. What if the ring is a blow pop? <laughs> could you, we would not be getting married. Could you settle the difference with like a box of Mike and Ice? <laughs> box of cereal. Well, what? I'm just, I'm just asking. I'm just saying some girls like McDonald's simple stuff. McDonald's Happy Meal. Yeah, some girls like simple stuff. It's, I mean, blow pops are valuable, okay? You obviously were never seven years old. A blow pop, a necklace, or yeah. belt. Yeah, they're just super, you know, you can just, okay. All right, let's move on to our second topic. Uh, in the meantime, guys, if you're on Twitter, we're at SoCal Sports TV. So talk to us about what you think about where the Raiders are going. A lot of Raider fans are passionate about them, obviously. So do you like Matt Schaub as an addition? Do you like getting rid of Terrell Pryor? And how many games will the Raiders win this season? I'm going to say like five, maybe. It's not. It's not looking good. I mean, it's not going to be much better. Schaub will be an improvement, but I don't see, you know, they're not going to win the division because Denver, San Diego, and Kansas City are all good. You think so. the Seahawks will win again? Well, that's a different topic for a different time. It is a time, different topic. No, I think the Denver Broncos will win the Super Bowl. Of course Bowl. you do. Any Denver team. <laughs> Bobby, yeah. Uh, Bobby is a passionate fan. All right. Well, speaking of football, Elise, let's talk college football. USC and UCLA specifically. Uh, Phil Steele at ESPN just did a projected preseason top 25. So it's not the top 25. It's not even the preseason top 25. It's projected. This is, I just, it just is something else to talk about. Obviously we're talking about it. He fooled us. I don't, I don't believe in any preseason lists or anything because what are you going off of? You're going off of the paper stats and paper stats. It's just like in theory, it sounds great, but it's not realistic. Don't tell that to sabermetrics guys in baseball. Yeah, I know. But it's just like what team, I think only a few times in history, the actual projected number one team has actually stayed number one and has won. Yeah. So it, there's just so many variables that, that take place during the season, rightfully so, that you're it's it's not going to be the same. No, I, I agree with that. And it is kind of a time waster, but it is fun to talk about college football in the middle of the summer because there's not really any other opportunity to talk baseball. about college football until sure. September. Um, but I got to ask, because Oregon is, is preseason projected third, which is fine, but we, you know this is the California, so Cal Sports Report, not the Oregon Sports Report. Thank UCLA God. is 12th, or, or seventh, excuse me. Stanford is 12th, USC is 14th, and then Washington rounds out the Pac-12 entries at 22nd. Is USC better than UCLA, or do you think it's UCLA's year? No, I mean, obviously I went to USC, I'm a huge USC fan, but you have to be realistic. Trojans are definitely realistic. And, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, so, you know, we have a new coach, uh, came from UW, Steve Stark, and, uh, you know, it's a rebuilding season for USC, and I think everybody knows that. Jim Moore has been there, he's built the team at UCLA, they're doing a great job, they have Brett Huntley back, so, they're in for a really good season, and they're going to give us a run for our money for sure. A, a run for your money. I like how you phrase that. It's not that UCLA is going to destroy USC or definitely going to win. They're going to give USC. I think we'll still put up a good fight. A yeah, run we fight. for their Trojans money. Fight, of course. So you're telling me that USC football. You're you're realistic as a USC football fan, and you don't expect to win a national championship this year. No, I, it, we're rebuilding. Anything can happen, but we have to be realistic about it. It's a rebuilding season it's a rebuilding time for usc and we know that this is the first time i've ever seen you be realistic about usc sports besides basketball which you are very pessimistic about yeah i told you i would not be a basketball i, I would be a college basketball fan if we were actually good in basketball because well, i would have gone to all the games in college i would have actually demar Derozan's really disappointed in you right now for not going to games i know i told you i met him once <laughs> he was friends with uh little romeo wait okay wait a minute you uh, let me. I'm just let me tell you what I'm picturing. 
Elise, DeMar DeRozan, and Romeo in the club. Is that <laughs> how it went too down? I I did not uh, have a fake ID at the time. So Are you saying like just on the record you didn't have a fake ID? Like wink wink nudge nudge or like No, I really didn't. Wow. I really did not have a fake ID. Okay. Uh yeah, no, he was friends with little Romeo and little Romeo was friends with one of my best friends on my floor. And I remember she was closer to DeMar Rosen than I was. I mean, I just, I just met him once. But, uh, little Romeo hung out on my floor. I uh, once came back to my dorm room, and he was shirtless in my room. Um, nothing happened, but it was just kind of an odd, surprising, shocking thing to come back to. Did you say, make him say, uh? I did not. Uh, see, I would have yeah, done that. It was, it was a little awkward. Yeah, it sounds like it would have been a little awkward, yeah. just like this transition right now from shirtless little Romeo. Okay, we started with college football in USC, USC and UCLA, and we ended with shirtless little Romeo. This is why it's SoCal Sports Report. Anything can happen, just like in sports. <laughs> That's true. Anything can happen, and there's no replay on this show, so we don't get a do-over. Let's move to topic number three. Talk about fun. This one's like going to be a fun one. one. This one's a good one. The best name in baseball. Maybe in California, maybe around the entire league, but who has the best name? name in Major League Baseball. And first off, for people who don't know, certain baseball players have good baseball names. There's good names and there's bad names. When I was playing baseball, everybody always said Bobby DeMuro, good baseball name. Of course you're going to say that. Wow. Okay, fine. I'll just talk directly to the camera. I was going to compliment you, say Elise Garcia would have been a great baseball name. But it would have no, been. Not anymore. Hard to say. But no. people would have actually gotten it right after it was established. Exactly. And it's short. It. Elise Garcia. Short. It can't be too long. It's got to be, I like alliterative. We'll talk about that in a minute. It's got to be short, unique, memorable, and you have to pronounce it right. And if it's not memorable, why don't you come up with a nickname? <laughs> a lot of them do. They do. They do. Pokey Reese. Yeah. Pokey was not his given name, but the for a long time, you know, uh, Pirates, Reds, Red Sox, second baseman, Pokey Reese, great baseball name. Uh, what if D. Gordon, Flashy, Flashy Gordon, or Flash, Flash Gordon, because he's fast, absolutely. So, what makes a good baseball what about name like for you? Sweet D. Sweet D. Yeah. Wow. They were saying that at spring training. Sweet Some D. Some fans were calling him Sweet D. It, well, he's a nice guy, right? You yeah, said he's, he's a very, very nice guy. Sweet, yeah. So, yeah, there you go. So, what makes a good baseball name for you? I mean, how do you find a good baseball name? Now, I know you like Latin American names. I do, but yeah. you know, so they're actually, it's actually kind of crazy because I'm going to talk about Eddie's Bell Adewe Baduena, which is crazy. It's a Cuban name. Hold on. Eddie's Bell Adewe Baduena. Yeah, you got it. Wow. There we go. I, I want to hear, first try. I want to hear Vince Scully say Right? It. That would be, that, that would be the day. He's actually, you know, he's going to be coming up hopefully soon. God, I hope Vince Scully's there when he comes up. I want to hear Vince Scully say Eddie's Bell Adewe Baduena. But now Cuban names are just so out there that, uh, you know, it's crazy. Like, eh, there's a, there's a Cuban joke, um, about a guy named Usnavi, and it's spelled U-S-N-A-V-Y. And the reason why his name is Usnavi is because they were, you know, the mother was standing out by the shore, and, you know, she was by, or maybe, you know, she was somewhere here already over on the U.S. side, and the U.S. Navy ship yeah. was there. And uh, she was like, yeah, I'm going to call my son <laughs> Usnavi, and uh, really, it's U.S. Navy. Is that is that just a joke, or did that actually happen? I'm not sure if it actually, I'm sure it happened. Wow. But it's a you know running joke in my family. All right. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, but yeah, anyways, Eddie's bad way, but when he actually, his name is so long and crazy and hard to say. A, no one knew how to say it, and people still don't know how to say it. And B, his name was actually spelled wrong. Like, there's so many letters to his name that when he came over, you know, there were not like documents or anything that, you know, when he was signed, there was actually like extra letters in there. And it, when they, he had to like, you know, like his jersey was spelled wrong and they had to like redo it. Because... See, that that to me is how you have a bad baseball name. As cool it as it is to say base. it. could be a bad So then now he needs some type of like a nickname because oh. it's so hard to well, say. Well, but the last name too. Anytime the last name on the jersey goes like a full about, half yeah. circle and it's all the way around. Remember former Dodger Todd Hollinsworth? Yeah. Hollinsworth was like H-O-L-L-A-N-D and it went all the but way around. But it's easy to say. Yeah, it is easier to say, but you can't go all the way around. That's true. I've got the best baseball names. First off, we like Mike Trout and Tim Salmon. The Angels like fish. They really do. What we were saying, what tilapia will be the next yeah, one? Yeah, Hector Tilapia, the relief pitcher what from about Venezuela. Halibut. Halibut. Like as you give a little baseball slap. Halibut. Joe. It's <laughs> not like a name. That's like a that a bait, like halibut. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That would be a good one. You do say that. quick. Go do that around the office. Let's see if it catches on. Halibut. <laughs> 
be sued for sexual harassment. Yeah, right. Um, couple great names. I don't know why I picked the Padres. I looked down the Padres roster. I love the Padres. I actually we love the, the Rockies and the Padres. Yeah, well, I don't know about the Padres, but Padres have great names. My perfect pick for best baseball name in all of Major League Baseball. Padres closer from Texas, Houston Street. Well, of course, because Texans are very proud, so they're going to name their stuff. But it's spelled differently it from spelled the city different. of Houston. But that's just but a you perfect... know what's really crazy is that that made me think of the Houston Street in New York. It's spelled just like Houston, but it's pronounced Houston because they don't want to be associated with Texas. That's quite a story, at least. Yeah. Got any more? Uh, they might. Yeah, <laughs> keep talking. So, in the, another one. <laughs> Another good one is Padres reliever from Latin America, I think from the Dominican Republic or Venezuela, Joaquin Benoit. How many Latin guys do you know with a French first name and a French last name? It's pretty crazy, but it happens. Well, it obviously happened yeah. that time. Here's a good one. for He used to play for the Marlins. I think he's actually retired now. Nobody picked him up this spring, so his career's probably over. He's got the Spanish... Oh, look at Sean That's true. So maybe he'll come back, too. He's got the Spanish first name, the French last name. Of course, I'm talking about former Dodger, Juan Pierre. And he's an American guy. Far off. Yeah. He's a, I met him in Colorado. I used to work out at the same facility he did when I was playing baseball and he was a Rocky. Just a normal American guy. He's from like South Alabama and his name is Juan Pierre. America. So weird. So bizarre. Only in America Only would you do that. Only in the US. Uh, a couple other good ones I like for the Padres actually. Jed Jerko, Alexia Marista, and Seth Smith because they are alliterative and Padres announcer is Dick Enberg. <laughs> Can you imagine Dick Enberg saying all these names? Jed oh, I Jerko. I have a friend named Alexi. It's a great That's name. So far off, yeah. Yeah. It's the Greek version of Alex. Oh, well, I don't know if this guy's Greek, but I didn't know that. Yeah. That's interesting. It's a very, like, I, I know Russia, in the Olympics, you see Alexi. It's pretty popular, especially from, like, Russia and that. That's, I didn't Eastern even think about Europe. that because this guy's Latin American. Right. Alexi Ramirez, the Chicago White Sox shortstop, is Cuban. So it happens down there, too. Yeah. Interesting. Well, we want to know you guys. Get on Twitter and tell us at SoCal Sports TV what is the best baseball name and what makes a good baseball name. What, in your opinion, makes a good name? What do you like about baseball names and who's got the best one? Another good one I just thought of Clayton Kershaw. Alliterative again, the hard k sound. Just sounds like a Say good pitcher name. Clayton Kershaw. What? Yeah. But k sound. K Clayton Kershaw. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right, that's it on Should SoCal. Should make a meme out of you saying that. Clayton Kershaw, a gif? Yeah. K. A gif. Jif? Jif. Is it jif or is it gif? Maybe they'll tell us that on Twitter. Yeah, let us know because it's, it's a topic of debate. <laughs> that is up for debate. That's the first topic next week. No, I'm kidding. That's it on SoCal Sports Report this week, guys. For Elise Garcia, I'm Bobby DeMiro. We will see you one week from today with more sports stuff.